We're fortunate today to have uh, two sponsors for our luncheon event. We have Northwest MedStar and the Tri-Cities Cancer Center, and their sponsorship includes the opportunity to speak to our group about their organization. So if you would uh, please help me welcome Mary Gilmore from Northwest MedStar and Michael Novakovich of the Tri-Cities Cancer Center. Good morning. It's always a pleasure to be here at the Chamber of Commerce luncheon. We really enjoy our partnership with the Tri-Cities Regional Commerce. And I don't know if any of you saw the helicopter that landed out by the uh, parking lot. That kind of stands for itself. But Northwest MedStar is a critical care transport company. We really work hard in making sure that patients get the level of care that they need. We, we have our ambulance out there as well. So whenever we have patients that need to move out to go to, a, a, whether it's into the Tri-Cities or to another facility, we have our helicopters, we have planes and ambulances on standby 24 seven, ready to do those transports. Um, in our audience, we have Roger Casey, who is our new base lead. He has 18 years of medical experience. He's down here. Go ahead, Roger. Don't be shy. And then we also have some of our medical crew. Every one of our transports, we have a critical care nurse and a respiratory therapist who go goes out and does the medical attention for those patients. And so if you have a chance and you see people with either with the MedStar hat or the flight suits, feel free to say hi to them. And if there's anything we can do, we have a booth out sort of in the middle area. We have the fortunate position to be right next to, or across from the chamber uh, booth. And so if you come and visit and try to do your little um, hooks or, or um, little round things to get the beer bottles, we're right across from them. So if you don't get any beer, come on over and see us at the MedStar booth. So anyway, thank you, Lori. Good afternoon. I am Michael Novakovich, Director of Business Development for the Tri-Cities Cancer Center, and we have a brief message we'd like to share, for you, share with you, if we can bring that up. Cancer. It can leave you feeling out of sorts. At the Tri-Cities Cancer Center, our goal is to help patients get back what's most important to them. Spending quality time with family, getting back to hobbies they love, returning to work, laughing with loved ones. It's why we're here to help put it all back together. It's your healthcare, it's your choice. Choose your Tri-Cities Cancer Center. So that's exactly what we're doing at the Tri-City Cancer Center, helping individuals and families pull the pieces back together. We've been doing it for nearly 20 years. Matter of fact, next year, 2014, marks our 20th anniversary. Uh, and roughly, well, better than 20 years ago, cancer care in the Tri-Cities was fragmented at best, and there was a group of community-minded people that got together and decided we needed a unified program. So through a lot of fundraising, bake sales, and uh, asking people for uh, small and, and large checks, um, and some serious negotiation between our hospital ownership, our doors opened in 1994, making that dream a reality. But our, our story doesn't end there. We continue to grow and evolve, offering uh, the highest levels of cancer care available anywhere. And to further that, we have recently signed an affiliation agreement with the Seattle Cancer Care Alliance. If you're not familiar, the Seattle Cancer Care Alliance is a consortium of Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center, University of Washington Medical, and Children's Hospital. Uh, and through this, we have access, direct access to these uh, individuals, there's physicians, we're really bringing their technology and, and uh, skills here to the Tri-Cities. We have educational opportunities for our staff and physicians through them. We're able to offer educational opportunities to local physicians through this uh, agreement here through the Tri-Cities Cancer Center. Uh, and it's just turning out to be a wonderful partnership. We're very excited about it. And speaking of partnerships, we're very excited about the collaborative efforts we have with our owner hospitals, Catholic Regional Medical Center, Lord's Health Network, Trios Health. Uh, we've got a number of coordinated efforts currently going on to again heighten the level of care available here in the Tri-Cities offering truly world-class care. And then when you look at our, camp our campus partners, Columbia Basin Hematology and Oncology, along with Tri-City Labs, uh, we're able to offer comprehensive cancer care solutions all under one roof. So what, what all of this has done is, is it's really made it so that individuals in, this, in the community, should they be challenged with a cancer diagnosis, don't need to travel out of the area. We have the same level of care you'd find in a large metropolitan area or university setting. 
So it's a very exciting time for the Cancer Center. We're excited about uh, what we have uh, going on this next year, heading into 20 years. We're very appreciative of the business community and individuals for your trust in us and your support and support of our foundation. Uh, and we're looking forward to the next 20 years of providing health and wellness benefits to the Tri-Cities. Thanks so much. Thank you again to both uh, Northwest MedStar and the Tri-Cities Cancer Center. Our community is really fortunate to have uh, both of these organizations in the, in the Tri-Cities. And uh, you might all recognize Michael. He's like very famous now because we used him in our uh, promotional materials for the expo. We should ask him to strike his, his pose that he used. Uh, this is actually from last year's expo. So thanks for letting us uh, use you in our promotional materials as well. Uh, hopefully you've all heard about the Small Business Incentive Program. This is made possible by the annual contribution of $30,000 by Washington River Protection Solutions. Over the past three years, Washington Protection Solutions has graciously given $90,000 to 135 regional chamber members. During July and August, qualifying members had the opportunity to apply for up to $1,000 in training, software, equipment, or websites. And I'm so pleased to introduce the president of Washington River Protection Solutions, who's joined us here today, Dave Olson, to say a few words before we announce this year's recipients. Please help me welcome Dave Olson. Well, good morning. The, uh, this is uh, the end of my fourth month here, relocating to the Tri-Cities and leading up the WRPS team. And I'll tell you that there isn't a more involved, engaged, and active community, a set of communities that I found here in the Tri-Cities. That also applies to the focus on small business. So it's my opportunity this morning to congratulate the Small Business Incentive Award winners, a small way that WRPS has been able to give back and continues to give back to that, that set of companies. Uh, last year, $77 million alone over 100 companies of small business work in our contract alone uh, here in the Tri-Cities at the Hanford site. So we know the importance of small businesses to accomplish the cleanup work out there at the Hanford location. So again, congratulations and well done to all those who are recipients this year. Thank you, Dave and WRPS for this opportunity provided to the Regional Chamber and for the impact you're making on small businesses and uh, welcome you to the Tri-Cities. So we have over 50 businesses who have been selected this year, many of whom are here today. Uh, we're gonna run down the list and we'd like for you to stand please if, uh, if your name is read and if you would just remain standing uh, while, uh, while I run through this list. Uh, we have Three Eyed Fish Wine Bar, 310 Consulting, Account Sense, American Tax Consultants, Apex Benefits Administration, Atomic Ale Brew Pub and Eatery, Benefit Partners Unlimited, Blinding Clean, Brandcraft Media, Brashears Photography, again, please stand if you're here, Buds and Blossoms 2, Castle Event Catering, CDMM, Selsky and Associates, Center for Psychological Services, Clover Island Inn, Cruise Holidays, Cupcakes Bakery and Deli, Dermacare of the Tri-Cities, Derma Health, Dermatology, Dirk and Derek Stricker of NAI, NAI Tri-Cities, Excelsior Design, Fella's Hair, Fit For Me, Fun Flanagans, Growing Forward Services, Henderson and Associates, J&J &J Kelly Construction, Jasmine Housekeeping, Kelly's Telecommunications, Legal Shield, Charles Mortimer, Levy Thompson Financial Planners, Monterosso's Italian Restaurant, Mustang Signs, Myers Therapeutic Massage, New Edge Wellness Center, Palmer Roofing Company, Pittsburgh, or Perfection Pittsburgh Paint, Porter and Company, Project Management Skills, Reflection Salon, Simplified Celebrations, Talos Engineering Incorporated, Technologize, the Speech Pathology Learning Center, Tri-Cities Property Management, Tri-City Industrial, Victoria's Academy, Walker High Meehan and Isinger, and Zinful Panini Grill. 
So again, congratulations to all of you. And thank you again to Dave Olson, Jerry Holloway, Melissa Gerard, and all of our friends from Washington River Protection Solutions, really an excellent small business partner. We'd like to ask all of the winners, uh, if you're here, to join us on stage afterwards. We'd like to take a group photo, which uh, we'll be using uh, throughout the next year to promote uh, this small business incentive program. Uh, so now to announce our October Outstanding Member of the Month. As you know, our Awards and Recognition Committee is uh, selecting members throughout the year to highlight at our luncheons. The Awards and Recognition Committee has selected Christensen King, PC, as the recipient for our October award. Christensen King was selected based on their longstanding support of the Regional Chamber. Not only have they been members since 1997, but they also are our internal CPA. They handle our payroll, our taxes, and do our month-end reporting for our board. Uh, a portion of the services provided by Christensen King are donated, and uh, the quality of service that they've provided to the Chamber has surpassed our expectations. At this time, I'd like to welcome the partners of Christensen King who have joined us here today. I believe we have Carol Brown. If you could join me on stage, and then again, we'll do a picture afterwards, but we'd like to recognize Carol Brown, Robert McBride, Scott Brunson, Joe Crowther, and Joe Reed. And uh, let's give them a round of applause, and uh, we have an award to give them. And uh, Joe Crowther here is actually, Joe, um, Joe knows our chamber probably better than most people in this room. He is, he is the guy that comes into the chamber and does uh, all of our things, and he's just a great help. We um, really enjoy working with Joe personally and appreciate everything that your company does for us. So I'll give this to you. Thank you so much. All right, it is now my pleasure to introduce Mike McCorder, the chair of our board of directors, to lead us through the rest of the program. Give Lori a great hand. Thank you, Lori. Uh, what a great crowd. It's great to see everybody here. At least I can see a little bit because my glasses, I can see this. It was a little foggy out there, so, you know, <laughs> but it looks great. Um, but this, I really have to uh, send out a shout out to Rene Vasquez, you know, just, <laughs> just giving you a hard time, Rene. <laughs> oh, no, thank everybody for being here. And also, I'd like to thank uh, WRPS for the outstanding contribution they made to our small businesses. As I was looking around and I mentioned to Dave, how, how, what a great way to touch a number of businesses in our community. So thank you again for that uh, contribution and what you do for the community. Also, congratulations to all the winners uh, and to those that received uh, the contribution and for the success of their help, the success of their business. And uh, to Chris and King, I've known their uh, CPA firm and the partners for a number of years, and it's, they do a great service for our chamber. Uh, for our luncheon, again, for our luncheon um, sponsors, uh, Tri City Cancer Center and Northwest MedStar, these events cannot happen without individuals that step up like these companies. And again, thank you. I'd like to give them a hand for that. Now I'd like, it's my pleasure to introduce our membership uh, communications and membership chair and director, Devin Diaz, who will introduce our newest members to the Tri-City Regional Chamber. Devin. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Devin Diaz, and I am the Membership and Communications Director at the Regional Chamber of Commerce. It is my pleasure to introduce some of our new members today. As I read your names, please come to the stage to receive your membership plaque, and please stand on the stage until all names have been read and, and we've taken a group photo. Starting with J. Hil Hilburn, Men's Custom Clothier, Sharon Swanson, es es Essential Healing, LLC, Melissa White, Eagle Home Mortgage, Ange Angie Knutson, Mortgage Stanley Wealth Management, Dave Kovas, Diffusion, Jeremy Carmi, Desert Canyon Mortgage Company, Jim Pogue, Farmers Insurance District Office, Owen Lee, Advocare, Jamie Richard, and Country Financial, Adam Hoover. Please join me in, in welcoming these new members to the Regional Chamber of Commerce.
While we, o while, while we are always pleased to see new members join, we also appreciate members that renew their membership year after year. They may not all be here today, but we like to acknowledge our members who have maintained their membership with the Regional Chamber for over 20 years. These organizations are truly dedicated to the Regional Chamber and the Tri-Cities community. 36 years, the Schwab Tire Center, Richland, Ariel Gourmet and GIF, Enon's Funeral Home, Yakima Federal Savings and Loan, Richland Cemetery Association. Celebrating 35 years, ALD Architects. 34 years, Progressive Sales Incorporated Real Estate. 33 years, Insurance and, and Financial Consultants. 28 years, U.S. Ecology Washington Incorporated. 27 years, Hampton Inn, Distinctive Properties Incorporated, Sasher. 25 years, Tri-City Herald, Sterling Bank, U.S. Linen and Uniform, Hall Engineering Associates. Celebrating 23 years, Sunshine Collision Service, Jacobs and Rose Heating and Air, Business Radio Incorporated. 22 years, Moon Security Services, Lutheran Community Services, and Fast Signs. 21 years, Frontier Title Escrow, Frontier Title and Escrow Company, Henry's Restaurant and Catering, Wayne Dalton Corporation of Kennewick, Super 8 Motel, Tri City Radiology, Bingo Boulevard. Washington Hardware and Furniture, Richardson's Garage Doors Incorporated, and last but not least, celebrating 20 years, the March of Dimes. Let's give our renewing members of 20 years or more a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you, Devin, and thank you to all our new members. Congratulations, and appreciate you uh, joining the chamber. I think you'll find the value and uh, for your, everything you can put into it. It's kind of a collaborative thing. You only get what you put into things, you know, and uh, part of that we see each day from different businesses and everything to make our chamber successful, and we've seen that today in the event we have today. It does, just doesn't take the staff from the chamber. It takes our community to put on events like this, and one of them that we're especially grateful for is Community First Bank for their premier sponsorship of the Business Expo event. Uh, community First Bank is a great community. Um, sponsor and partner, and, we'd and at this time I'd like to introduce their president and CEO, Eric Pearson, to say a few words and introduce our keynote speaker, Shema Kamani. Well, thank you, Mike. Uh, what a great event, and nice to be introduced by Mike as well. Not only is Mike the uh, board chair for the Chamber of Commerce, but he's also an exceptional insurance broker here locally, and uh, maybe most importantly to me, a founding shareholder and director of Community First Bank. So it's just nice to see how a community comes together, an event like this, the, the connections that are made and the networking that goes on, and I think you know the connection that we have with Mike is just a, a great example of that. Well, I get the privilege of introducing our our featured speaker today uh, as part of our sponsorship, which we're very proud to be a part of. But first, I get to take a little time to, to thank a few folks. First, I'd like to recognize uh, you know, the Chamber of Commerce for all of their hard work and, and putting on just such an ex exceptional program for us, so thank you. <clears throat> Next, I'd like to recognize uh, our great team at Community First Bank, just an outstanding group effort of employees. We've got several tables here, a mix of employees and customers. Will you please stand up and be recognized? <clears throat> We're excited to be here. They've been working hard for, for a long time to put this event together. Uh, please come check out our booth in the trade show if you stick around and all the other exhibitors' booths. Uh, I think it's a great networking opportunity. And later this afternoon, uh, the Schmooza Palooza, I believe it's called, that we'll all hopefully uh, have a good time at. So again, just a little bit about Community First Bank. We are a locally owned bank, locally uh, operated, founded in 1997, headquartered in Kennewick, uh, committed to staying local and serving our clients with an you know, exceptional level of service. Uh, focused primarily on small business and professionals, but you know all of the individuals that are associated with such organizations. So hopefully you're able to find us. Uh, hopefully we learn a thing or two from our presenter on maybe how to do better in social media so you can find us that way. Uh, but we'd like to get to know you better and hopefully earn your business. With that, I get to introduce our featured speaker, and it's quite an impressive resume slash introduction, so uh, please pay attention. It is, uh, <coughs> our keynote speaker is Shama Kabani. 
a web and TV personality, best-selling author, and international speaker. She's an award-winning CEO of the Marketing Zen Group, a global online marketing company. Shama is a, the face of today's digital world and represents the best her generation has to offer. She has aptly been dubbed the master millennial of the universe and an online marketing shaman by FastCompany.com. The third edition of her best-selling book, The Zen of Social Media Marketing, was released in January of 2013. Shama is also an accomplished international speaker and hosts her own digital series, Shama TV, Shama.tv. The show addresses new media marketing topics, trends, people, and relevant perspectives. She also hosts multiple business and technology segments on TV. Shama formed the Marketing Zen Group in 2009, and since then, the company has grown to include a team of 30 and clients that range from publicly held Fortune 500 companies to privately held small businesses and nonprofit organizations. The company serves clients worldwide, including companies in Europe, Asia, and Central and South Americas. Since its start in 2009, average company growth is 400%. She holds a master's degree in organizational communication from the University of Texas in Austin and prides herself in being a, cons a constant learner. 2009 Business Week honored Chama as one of the top 25 under 25 entrepreneurs in North America. In 2010, Shama won the prestigious Technology Titan Emerging, Emerging Company CEO Award. In 2011, Entrepreneur Magazine featured her as one of the four supersonic youth, dubbing her a Zen master of marketing. And in 2012, Shama's company, the Marketing Zen Group, was honored at the White House for being named to the Impact 100 list of top 100 U.S. companies to be run by a young entrepreneur. Truly a remarkable uh, resume. And for those of you who weren't able to take part in her seminar this morning, she's dynamic. Uh, knowledgeable and I think a breath of fresh air and maybe she'll be able to share a little bit about some star power girl power Please join me in welcoming Shauna Kabani Hello Tri-Cities I come all the way from Dallas, Texas, so howdy y'all and you're welcome for the weather about that Texas sunshine here. So I'm thrilled to be here. I've enjoyed meeting many of, uh, many of you in here for the morning session. And uh, you know, it's just, it's so nice when you go to a place and people are inviting and warm and it seems like you have a community that cares deeply about each other and supporting each other in, uh, in all your successes. So thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of that. I'm excited today because we're gonna talk about marketing the future and uh, digital trends which are shaping the future as, as we sit and speak and, and eat and all these other good things. So um, does anybody scare, does anybody scared of marketing a little bit? Anybody scared of the future? Maybe you will be after I'm done with the talk. Yes? So let's, so let's get started. Wonderful. So I want to give you a little bit of my, uh, about myself. The bio that is not the bio, so the non-official bio. What makes me, at 28, be able to stand up here and tell you about the future of marketing? And I'll give you a little bit of a, a background on myself that might highlight that a little bit further. So I graduated from University of Texas at Austin. Any Longhorns? <laughs> One over there. <laughs> Very good. So I graduated from the University of Texas at Austin, and I got my bachelor's and my master's there and I got my master's in organizational communication and technology. Very specifically, I studied social networking and social media before they were actual subjects or industries. So I did my thesis on Twitter when it had 2,000 users. Does anybody know how many users t uh, Twitter has today? Yes, that's correct. <laughs> 275 million users. 275 million users. And when I got out with my graduate degree and uh, went to companies and I said, you know what? Social media is gonna change how we communicate. This is what the future looks like. What do you think they said to me? You gotta be out of your mind, kid. Right? We don't see this ever being anything more than what it is now, which is just a fad, which is, uh, I'm sure some of these same people said the internet was a fad too. And so at all these companies who looked at me like I was crazy and they said, you know, we don't, we don't see a place for social media at all. And so at 23, I started my own company. Uh, the beautiful thing about being 23 is that you have very little to lose. And I realized that if someone didn't give me a job, I would just start my own company because no one told me I couldn't. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you. That was the easy part. Starting my company was the easy part. Getting it to grow and getting people on board with social media, that was more challenging. But of course, you know, time, time changes so much. And here we are a little over four years. And uh, we've got a team of 30. Many of those companies who didn't see the value of new media then are now clients of ours, dear clients of ours. And uh, last year, we were honored at the White House as one of the top 100 companies to be run by a young entrepreneur. And I share this with you to give you a sense of, you know, not only have we seen what works with our clients in terms of what the future will hold and what we're seeing work really well now, but we've also gotten a very good sense of what works for growing our own company. So I grew my company using completely new media, social media. Um, you know, when you start a company, they say start with the people you know. Start with the people that can support you. And my list included my mom, dad, my sister, my dog, and cat. And of the last three, I wasn't certain who was more worthless. So I figured, you know, I'm going to... I'm, gonna, I'm going to use new media, and that's essentially how we built our company. So to this day, all the marketing we do, how we attract attention, it's all inbound. So the principles I'm sharing with you, these trends that you'll see that are shaping the, the next 10, 15 years, maybe even the next five years, uh, these are the same things that have helped, you know, that I've used practically, that we've used practically with our clients too. So some of it may be theoretical, but I'll try to make it as accessible for you as possible. Let's talk about what is social media very briefly, because I think some of you may have come in here and have a notion of what social media is. There's two definitions. The first definition is websites where people connect, communicate, collaborate. So things like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, these are all social networks. But there is a bigger definition of social media, and that's what I'd encourage you to start thinking about. Are you guys ready for this? Okay, big stuff. I know you haven't had coffee yet, but this is big, okay? People are now the media. People are now the media. And that really is the power of social media. And we were, earlier in the seminar, we were talking and said, how many of you, when you check out, want to check out a new restaurant, check Yelp first for reviews? When you want to see a movie, how many of you look at movie reviews online before deciding what to see? That really is the power of social media. It's not relegated to one site or one network. It's how we now communicate directly and in mass that that's social media and that's the true power. And that's what I just want to get you guys thinking about. If you guys can see the slides here, this is just a, if you have two minutes later in the day and you want to laugh and uh, realize how quickly things are changing, I recommend you watch this little video on YouTube. It's of a two-year-old girl who thinks that a magazine is a broken iPad. <laughs> How many of you think the iPad is pretty nifty? Yes? It's pretty nifty. Like, let's face it, we were all like kids on Christmas Day when we figured out it moves and you can do it. Like, honey, check this out. This is so neat. But there's a whole generation out there that thinks that the iPad, that is their standard. The iPad is their standard. There's technology is their standard. And this girl is so brilliant because her mom gives her the iPad, she's thrilled. She takes it away, she gives her the magazine. She's so confused. She flips it over, she tries to figure it out. And if you've ever been around a two-year-old kid, you know they've just figured out how to use their fingers. So before she thinks that, you know, this isn't working, she makes sure to see that her finger is still working. So she checks her finger against her palm and shows her mom that my finger is still working, so indeed, this is broken. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? A whole generation of kids where technology is their standard. And so we're moving faster and faster toward this type of world. And I love this because when they say a picture is worth a thousand words, this is what they mean. I know, I'll give you guys a second to take it in. This is St. Petersburg Square, Russia. What's the biggest difference you see between 05 and 2013? It's enormous. The big difference is in 2005, only the few thousand people at that square got to witness that event. In 2013, millions of people got to witness the same event. And that's the big shift that's happening right now in new media. All of this information, all these things, they're creating digital footprints for us. 
whether you're an individual, whether you're an organization, whether you're a group, whether you're a chamber, it's all working towards creating a digital footprint. And you, here's the thing about a digital footprint, you don't actually have to ever contribute to it. It's what everybody else says about you too. So for those of you who are saying, I've never had a digital footprint, I've never done anything online, doesn't make a difference because someone else has contributed towards it. So this is almost kind of a mini trend, a preview trend to the main trends that each and every one of us has a digital profile now, a digital footprint. And so many of these trends I'm sharing with you today, I hope you'll keep this in the back of your mind as to how do you use this to further your digital footprint and to make it a positive one. I just think this is so interesting. AVG did uh, research in 2010, and they found that 81% of kids under the age of two already have some sort of digital footprint. That number goes up to 91% for American kids. Because parents share pictures, grandparents put up things, so your digital footprint is being created long before you actually have a say. And I know Eric here alluded to my girl power, star power. That was to a story I shared earlier in the workshop. When I was 14 years old, I wrote a poem, indeed, called Girl Power, Star Power. And when I started my company, when I Googled myself, it was one of the first things that came up. And clients started finding it. And one of them sent it, sent it to me and said, is this you? And what do you think I said? I said, no, it's a different Shama Haider. I said, it's a very common name. It must be someone else, you know? This is when schools thought the internet was a fad, so they put stuff up without the permission of their parents. And now it's still out there, page 58, last I checked. But it's still out there. And all of this, everything that you do, all, all the things that you do offline and online, they all contribute to a digital footprint. So, so, much of these, so many of these trends we're talking about, they all tie into building a more positive digital footprint for yourself. So let's look at the top five digital trends. And what I think is so funny is sometimes I meet people and they think, oh, this is interesting, or they hear the presentation. And then inevitably, six months later, someone will email me and said, you know that trend you were talking about that sounded so bizarre and so off the wall? I saw it. I saw it in a store. I saw it somewhere. So I hope that you guys will share with me when you catch these trends. But the first trend is an identity-based ecosystem. An identity-based ecosystem. Anybody seen Facebook's new timeline? Yes? Why do you think they did that? Why in the world do they keep changing things just when you get comfortable with the way things are? And here's the answer. Do you remember how I told you I did my thesis on Twitter? On social networking? So some of you may be thinking, hey, you know, you, you were probably gung-ho about social media when you started. No, when I started, I asked, why in the world do people use social networking sites? That was my question. In my graduate school, in my thesis, that's what I posed. I said, why do people use social networking? Why do people share what they had for lunch? You know, or I just peeled a banana. It's like, good for you. You can tweet and peel at the same time. It's quite a skill. But I was so confused. I didn't quite understand as a student. So of course, I researched it. And my hypothesis was that it was to connect with other people. We use social networking to connect, to communicate, to feel that connection with others. But I was wrong. The number one reason people use social networking sites is to showcase their own identity. Okay, so now I'll let you guys take a moment and think how narcissistic of all of us. Yeah, man, we are so vain. All those TV shows are right. We're so self-obsessed. But if you actually stop to think about it for a second, you'll find that this is how we human beings become who we are. And you'll have to forgive me for putting on my academia hat for just a second. How we become who we are isn't just, you know, especially in the US, we like to think, oh, I am who I am because of all my thoughts and all my, you know, it's just all my personality. But really, it's always the reflection of society to some degree. We put out who we are, we get feedback, we change based on that feedback. So we've always showcased our identity. Look at caveman draw drawings. That's a, a form of expression. Today, the mediums have changed, but that's why people use it. That's why people use social networking sites to showcase who they are. Did anybody have a, uh, did anybody decorate their locker in high school? Okay, welcome to the digital locker. <laughs> okay, that's a lot of what this is, but if you think about it, smart companies have figured it out, like Facebook. They figured out that if people are using social networking to showcase their own identity, then we should give them a platform to do it. 
If you have a business, if you are trying to get a, a message out there, it's to your benefit if you figure this out and say, you know what, how can we make this about our audience rather than about us? So for example, let's say uh, there's a realtor out there, right? A real estate uh, agency, a real estate firm. And they're here in the Tri-Cities area. And they set up a Facebook page that says, you know, um, Bob's Tri-City Real Estate or Bob the Realtor. That's one way to do it. But if you understand this trend of an identity-based ecosystem of catering to the individual, and you create a uh, page that says, we love Tri-Cities or the coolest of all things Tri-Cities, and it's sponsored by Bob the Realtor, which page do you think does better? The latter. Why? Because you fed into this, because I'm much more likely to click a page, for example, that says, I love Dallas, rather than a company that does something in Dallas. Because that allows me to showcase who I am. That allows us to showcase who you are. And you'll continue to see this. More and more companies are understanding this and realizing why people use networking sites, why people use online media. And the more you can understand this and appreciate it, because it does take a little getting over, right? You have to get over the sense that people really use it just to showcase who they are. It's a big, it's a big part of it, absolutely. The second big trend is content curation and aggregation. Anybody see the movie You've Got Mail? Yes, Tom Hanks at his best, Mag Ryan never looked cuter. Great movie, You've Got Mail. Do you know that they could never do a remake of that movie? Does anybody know why? Because nobody's excited to get mail anymore. Okay? We just wouldn't buy it. We would go to the theaters, and remember how Meg Ryan was so cute? No spammer ever had her email address. It was always Tom Hanks, and like, ding, and it was just one email, and you've got mail. And what happens when you leave here today? You're like, 30 emails, I've been out of the office for two hours. Right, you're not sitting here giving out your email address. To it, it, you regard that so much more. So what changed? We were information hungry. Do you guys remember when people said they used to surf the web for fun? Like it was an activity. You know, I like long walks on the beach and surfing the web. That's when surfing the web only had, like you literally could surf the web in two hours and you say, I, w I spent my day on the internet. And of course, today it's so, so different. So we've gone from being information hungry to it's too much information, but we still need information, right? So for example, would it be helpful to you if I said when you were going, if when you leave here and you go home, that, there, uh, that one of the roads that you use is closed? Would that be useful information if I gave it to you now? Yes. What about when you got home and you're nice and you know, sitting on your couch, it's 8 p.m., and then I tell you that the road was closed at 4 p.m., is that helpful? No, not at all. The same information becomes spam within hours because the context is gone. So the big trend we're seeing is content curation and aggregation. How do you make sense of all this information? And here's a great example, Pinterest. How many of you are familiar with Pinterest? How many of you are pinning as we speak? It's quite an addictive site. But Pinterest, for those of you who may not be familiar, is one of the fastest growing social networks in the US right now. It's a very simple concept. It allows people to pin or uh, cut out essentially images from the web and collect them, curate them, share them. So if any of you have ever scrapbooked or used to cut out things and, and keep things in file, now people do this online. So why is Pinterest useful? Why is it growing so fast? It actually offers no product or service of its own. It only allows people to curate information. And I'll give you an example. My husband and I bought a house two years ago, and I'm not a decorator by a far shot, but I go on Pinterest and I look at what's, you know, what are the best design trends, what are my most fashionable friends sharing, you know, what kind of couch goes well in this type of corner. I don't have to search the entire web for this information. I can just go curate this information all sorts of things for any type of wedding planning, for everything from fashion to pets to any interest you may have, there's a chance that there's a Pinterest board for that information. And you'll see this, ra this trend continue to rise. Here's another example. Is anybody familiar with Quora? Quora is another social networking site, different than Facebook and, and Twitter and LinkedIn in the sense that it's a Q&A site. People answer questions. So rather than Googling things, you're asking more personal questions. For example, 
When Steve Jobs passed away, someone said, what was Steve Jobs like? And people who had met him in real life, people who were friends with him, people who had real experiences all answered the question. Right? Within context, you'll see a lot more sites like this rise before the end of, of, uh, of the decade. Listly, anybody like making lists? Sharing them, checking it twice? A little early for a Christmas joke, perhaps? But Listly is great because it allows you to make lists and share them with other people. Top productive apps, best websites for research, things you need to do before you move a house. All this information is, is curated. Bloodhound. Bloodhound is an app for events, very similar to this, is an expo and such, and puts all that information of what's going on, which booth is where, um, plans, events, all the brochures, everything from the event on this one little app. So before, where you used to go and you had that big badge or you had to scan everything, now all that information is on one app. Information is better organized, it's better curated. Visualize me. This is really neat. Anybody have a LinkedIn profile? I hope all of you. I hope all of you have a LinkedIn profile. But if you have, for example, if you have a LinkedIn profile and you have visualize.me, it takes all your LinkedIn data and turns it into a nice visual infographic within minutes. One more way of understanding information, of aggregating information in a way that makes sense to the viewer. More and more sites like this will pop up in the next few years. And if you can also curate and aggregate information for your community, then you win. So if you think about it, a, a chamber, for example, has been doing this for, for a millennia, right? Long before, long before social media was around, a chamber's job is to curate the best of the community. And so that's happening more and more. And we need those tools for curation. We need those filters to help us make sense of the world around us. The third big uh, trend that I'm seeing is video and it turning device agnostic. Do you know that 64% of people will finish watching up to a 30 minute commercial video clip? versus 24% who will finish reading an article. I'll repeat it for you. 64% of people will finish watching up to a 30 minute commercial video clip versus 24% who will finish reading an article. And we've all done it. We've all been guilty of watching that infomercial, right? For the knives or whatever it is. It's like, I really should change the channel now, but I'm watching. Online video is so powerful. Now, just to give you an example of this, how many of you, when you're watching video, say, oh, I'm watching video on television? How arcane does that sound already? And it's not, it hasn't been that long, but when you say you're watching a video, it could mean you're watching it on YouTube on your phone, you're watching it you know, on your tablet, you're watching it on any device you have in front of you. So video becomes more and more device agnostic, and becomes a greater, more interactive part of how we communicate and market. And this is, a, this is a good example. All right, this will scare some of you, but try not to be too freaked out by it. Aim High was a show released on Facebook, a web series, about a, um, aren't they all now, about a high school student in the day who is a CIA operative in the evening. And you, can and you could choose to watch, if you'll notice, a standard episode. You could watch a standardized episode and the plot and the characters and whatnot. But you could also choose to watch a personalized episode. Scary? Yes? A little preview? Halloween came early this year. <laughs> personalized episode is where it incorporates things from your profile into the video. So the character's music list is your Spotify music list. When he's running down the hallway and it says, you know, vote for class precedent, that isn't the picture of another cast member, that's the picture of one of your friends. And so some of you may be going, I watch video TV to get away from real life. And I, I, that's how I take a break. But the beauty of this, you have to notice, is that it's options. You get choices. And I'm actually going to predict that within the next decade, when you go to the movies, it will be a different movie than the person you're watching it with will see because it'll know if you prefer a happy ending, if you kind of like it a little mysterious, you know, you can actually, you'll be able to have the same movie and multiple versions of that movie to, to suit your demands. And I know some of you are going, this is crazy, but that's what they said five years ago and I wasn't wrong then. And I have a strong sense that I'm not wrong now. Here's the, actually already, this is interesting. This was an app that lets you purchase things within a video. 
So if you like, it's like a shopping cart within a video. So if you like something, you could purchase it. So it's e-commerce meets online video. And here's a great example. Anybody shop at Target? Really? Nobody shops at Target? Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Falling for You was a great romantic comedy sitcom. And uh, the difference was, if you liked something in this video, you could click on it, and it would immediately be bought, shipped in your size, and the video would never pause once. So for women, if you saw like, oh, that blue sweater is so cute, now you just click on the blue sweater, and it's shipped, it's added, it's done, no problem. Right, with my husband it would be like, oh, that 70 inch screen, that looks really good, click. But you'll see more of this where online video gets more interactive, more integrated, and your experiences with the world are going to be so much more personalized. You know, sometimes people say, do you think there'll ever be a time when there's no marketing? And I say, no, but there will be a time where, you know, 99% of the things that you get are so targeted towards you that you'll never say, this doesn't apply to me. Do you guys ever get mailers and stuff and you're like, okay, this is not relevant to me or we never order pizza or we're allergic to this or that? That will never happen in the future because our targeting, our demographics, our, um, our segmentation, our personalization is getting so much better and stronger. And these are all examples. So the fourth trend that I'm seeing is the four screen revolution. And we actually saw this really well at, uh, during the Super Bowl. How many of you guys are guilty of this? You're sitting at home, right? You've got the TV on. You're checking email on your laptop. You're texting someone back. And you've got the tablet open because you know, you're, you're browsing like the latest pictures of your friends on Facebook. It's the four screen revolution. Never before in our lives have we ever had four screens like that on simultaneously. And most of you probably at this very second, it's the first time you're really consciously thinking about that fact that that's how you've used it. And if you watch television now, they're integrating all of this. Because it's, you, there's rarely a show that doesn't say, oh, watch this and hashtag it. You know, can you predict who their killer is? Or tweet this, or text this. So there's this whole four screen revolution where the content that we're sharing isn't just gonna be on our laptop, or a tablet, or our cell phone, or TV. It's really gonna be the seamless integration. One of the things that I tell people right now is they talk about difference between traditional marketing and digital. In a few years, that line won't exist. Do you ever tell people, I'm going to telephone you? Have you ever used that phrase? No, right? Hopefully not. When you say, I'm gonna connect with you, that means what? You'll text them, you'll call them, you know, you'll call them on the cell, you'll email them in the office, whatever, you'll get in touch with them. That's how arcane it'll be when you tell, talk to someone about traditional versus digital in the future, because that line gets so blurry. The fifth trend, and this is something that's applicable to you regardless of who you are, where you work, whether you own a business, whether you work for someone else, whether you're you know, a college grad, doesn't matter. I'm honestly predicting that in the next five years, one of the things required for any job will be social literacy skills, digital literacy skills. And I'm not just talking about you know, Microsoft Word, which by the way, please stop putting that on your resumes. <laughs> I get a lot of resumes every, and I look at it and it says skill is Microsoft Word. I'm like, if you're gonna put that, you might as well like speaks English. You know, it's like you you got it, you got Word down, that's great. But these type of skills are the ones that are really gonna launch us forward and they will be required in the C-suite, they will be required in any job you do because how you interact with people will be digital in such a big way. So a couple of things, for personal, these are the three literacies I see. One is being a content creator. Are you creating thought leadership around what you do? It doesn't matter if you work for a company, if you own a company, what is your brand? And every individual has a brand, every individual has a strong digital footprint, or you have the possibility for a strong digital footprint. If you're not creating content, are you curating content? Someone told me the other day, you know, I never tweet anything, I just retweet and share stuff I find interesting. And I said, then that's the best thing you could possibly be doing. Because it's about providing value. Can you be that filter for your community, for your customers, for your audience that helps them understand that? And then being a connector. So much of digital skills is knowing how to connect, knowing the etiquette, 
Does anybody ever get those um, My Biz Card invites in LinkedIn? You guys seen that? There's a new trend going where people say, please rate me and here's my biz card on LinkedIn. That is terrible. Please do not send those. <laughs> do not click on them. I mean, so much of this is kind of learning etiquette as we go, but this will be expected. Right now, a lot of faux pas are forgiven because we as a society are trying to figure out where do we draw the line, what's appropriate, what's not. But as we go further, you will be expected to know how to connect appropriately online and what that looks like. As an organization, you have three things. Agility, adaptability, and what I mean by that is it used to be all about the strategy you had, your five-year plan, your 10-year plan. Well, now there really should be more like frameworks because what's important is how quickly can you adapt? How quickly can you take advantage of a network that comes out? How quickly can you uh, pivot your strategy in order to maximize what you're trying to do? And these are the companies that are really going to succeed in the future, the ones that can pivot very easily to meet the needs of their community. The second is aggregation. There's so much information coming at you at all times, internally, externally, boards, right? Uh, press, media, government. There's so much information. Can you aggregate that information well? Are you overwhelmed by it, or can you be very mindful and strategic in how you use that information and figure out what's relevant and what's not? And then the, the last thing is really authenticity, which I think is so important. I, I'm fond of saying that today, in today's day and age, it's easier to be a nicer, better person than it is to try and pretend to be a better, nicer person or a nicer company. Because it's so transparent, you know, they, they figure things out so quickly. There was, a, um, there was a CEO who was writing negative things about their competitors on forums under an anonymous screen name, you know. Um, and somebody traced his IP address back. They traced his IP address back, they were outed, CEO lost the job, board of directors took a hit, you know, stocks tanked for a little bit. It was terrible. All for, you know, some maybe being able to bring someone down a little bit or they, there's nothing anonymous anymore. Everything can be traced back to you. People think they can delete tweets or you can remove something. No, if there's anything that you do out there, at some point, they can and will trace it back to you. So the companies of the future are the ones that really work hard not to say, how should our perception be? What are, you know, cares about optics, but actually works internally to say, how do we fix this? How do we fix this? Because it's a, it's a glass door. You know, the, the office of, of the future has really moved. And I'll, I'll end with this little story about, about my company. As I told you, we're 30 people. We serve you know, a broad clientele. We don't have an office. We've never had a physical office. Our team works from all over the US. Our clients are all over the world. And we've never had a physical location. And sometimes when people say, where's your office? I see the cloud. And then if they really don't know what I'm talking about, they say, is that uptown? And then I just have to laugh, and now I'm just, just saying, yes, it's really uptown. But it's amazing, you know, these, these, the technology and what it affords us the power to do. And as we move forward, I think these are trends that you're going to continue to see, where things get more personalized, they are more catered towards you, the individual, and that ecosystem. Anything that helps people make sense of information out there with the curation is going to be a huge deal. Online video is going to play a huge role for a long time to come, continuing to be more interactive, device agnostic, and our screens will keep increasing. You know, it's not like, oh, we've got four screens, we're finally going to, to bring them down. No, everything will eventually, at some point, be a screen. You know, already, if you think about it, we work with so many screens, even your, um, even your temperature gauge, that's a screen. Your, your car, when you sit in your, your dashboard is a screen. So you will continue to work more with technology in this way. And then, of course, as we move forward, these skills will become extremely important. So the more you work to become savvier of technology, but just not, you know, let's follow the latest trend, but really strategically and mindfully focusing on what are your goals? What is it that you want to accomplish? What is it that you want to give back to the world? And then figuring out which of these trends and tools make sense. I invite you guys to, to keep in touch with me. If you have any other thoughts, questions, it's kind of a big event, so I'm not going to get to talk to each of you personally. Uh, but I certainly welcome any comments you have, any thoughts. Shema, you're crazy. I don't think that's ever going to happen. 
or I totally saw this and I, you know, this is one of the trends you were talking about. I welcome that. I thank you so much for the warm welcome you've given me here in Tri-Cities. Thank you, Ms. Kamani. What a great present. Now that's girl power right there. That was awesome. Thank you very much. What a great presentation. And she will be available afterwards. So please, uh, I know there's a lot more questions out there. There was a lot of information that she gave us, and I was trying to write it down so quickly. Uh, so thank you. Appreciate you being here. Hope you were entertained and also felt it was worth your while to come to lunch today and join us. Again, I'd like to thank Community First Bank for their premier sponsorship for today's expo event, Northwest MedStar, MedStar and Tri-Cities Cancer Center for sponsoring the lunch, Troy Woody and his staff at uh, TRAC uh, for their hospitality, Washington River Protection Solutions for their amazing investment to the small businesses of our community. Thank you again. Also for uh, uh, congratulations to our outstanding uh, member of the month, Christian King CPAs. Charter Communications, thank you very much. Uh, also, our, also, all of our Expo, Expo exhibitors and sponsors for making this our best Expo yet. Before we adjourn, I have a couple business things. To attend, to attend our afternoon workshops, Effective Marketing and Federal Government taking place in room two at two. Uh, to stop by the Business uh, Resource Center between 2.30 and 4 p.m to get your questions answered by uh, industrial experts. Uh, the expo will open, so please, here as soon as we leave, make sure you go through that. There's a number of booths back there and have information for you. And also remember, Smooza Palooza takes place at four, between uh, 4 to 5.30 tonight. Fun, some alcohol, a little bit. Hopefully just a little bit. Uh, and, and congratulations to all the 50 businesses that, uh, that participated in Business Incentive Program winners. But please remember to join us on the stage right after this. We want to take your photo. Also, I have one other thing that uh, Heather reminded me of. We need to mark our calendars from some upcoming events. Uh, for November luncheon happening Tuesday, November 12th. And why that's important, that is a change of date. So please mark that in your calendar. Uh, again, that's November 12th at the Pasco Red Lion. The Regional Chamber is uh, partnering with the Washington Policy Center for their uh, statewide policy conference. Uh, visit their booth at the Expo Trade Show for more details. Also, the Tri-Cities Women in Business Conference will be taking place January 22nd. Again, great conference. Those that attended last year, uh, I think they, they really uh, enjoyed it. And so please put that on your calendar. Again, January 22nd, 20,014, 2014. I just, it's hard to say that already. I mean, excuse me, going so fast. Here at the Track Center, it'll be here, so please put that in your calendar. And for last thing, it's always great business to do business with Tri-City Regional Chamber of Commerce businesses. Thank you.